Good morning, guys. Today, we're going to be reading Dolce Domum Part 1 from CKLA, Lesson 6. Our learning targets for today, I want you to be able to describe images from the first five read-alouds to summarize the plot and to emphasize aspects of the characters, Mole and Rat, in the read-aloud Dolce Domum Part 1. You're going to make personal connection to one's home given Mole's response to his home in Dolce Domum Part 1. You're going to summarize the first five read-alouds, and you need to show me or demonstrate understanding of literary terms such as characters, setting, plot, dialogue, personification, perspective, theme, and narration by using those terms in discussing Dolce Domum Part 1. Here are our key vocabulary words for today. We have advance. It's a noun, meaning a movement in a forward direction. Like we watched the army advance across the field. The second word is recollection. It's a noun, meaning the act of remembering, something remembered. My grandmother's recollection of when she was a child was an interesting story to listen to. Number three, reproached. Reproached is a verb meaning scolded or corrected, expressed disapproval or blame. My mother reproached me for making a mess and not cleaning it up. Number four, subtle. It's an adjective meaning faint, delicate, or slight. The subtle clues gave me a hint to who the mysterious person was. Number five, unerring. Unerring. It's an adjective meaning always accurate, making no mistakes for certain or sure. The unerring ways of the man were kind of suspicious. I don't believe he was quite always accurate. So what have we learned so far? So far, we've learned that theme is a literary tool used by authors. It's a broad idea that comes up many times over the course of a story. So let's look at the themes chart, basically, to review the themes and where they occur in each chapter. Pay attention to today's read aloud to see if you recognize the themes. What themes have we been talking about so far? You remember we talked about hospitality, friendship, loyalty, responsibility, and irresponsibility. Let's summarize the plot so far using these images. So in chapter one, the first day's read aloud, what do you see and what do you remember from the story? Mole and Rat are on the river talking about the wild wood. Water Rat and Mole met and became friends. On the second day, what do you remember from the story? That Mole is staying with the Rat, and this is at Rat's home before the hearth. The hearth is the picture of the fire. On the third read aloud, there was a change in plans. Mole, Rat, and Toad go on a disastrous trip on the open road and return home. The fourth read aloud. Rat finds Mole in a tree hollow in the wild wood. Mole goes to the wild wood to find Mr. Badger and gets lost, but Rat finds him. From the fifth read aloud. Here we see a picture reminding us about lunch at Badger's. Then Rat and Mole find Mr. Badger and spend the night with him. Also within the fifth read aloud, we hear about Mr. Badger's shortcut. He shows Mole and Rat a shortcut from the wild wood and back to the riverbank. You recently heard more about Badger. Describe Badger 
by asking yourself, what kind of character is Badger? Dolce Domum. Say what? It's actually Latin for meaning home sweet home, similar to saying there's no place like home. So think for a minute. What exactly, what exactly does that mean to you? Have you ever been away from home for a long time and gotten homesick? How'd you feel when you finally got back home? Maybe you took a long trip and you couldn't sleep very well, but when you got home, you fell right asleep in your nice soft bed. Have you ever moved from one place or a home to another? What was it like? How did moving make you feel? Ah, down here we have a character, Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. She really wanted to get home too. So today, there's our purpose for listening. Mole has been away from his home for several months while staying with Rat. Listen to find out how Mole feels when he passes through his neighborhood and smells his home. No. This is Mole, smells and remembers his old home. Not long after their adventures in the wild wood, the rat and the mole found themselves plodding silently along a country lane. The rapid nightfall of mid-December had already descended upon them. The mole was thinking of supper as he followed obediently behind the rat, leaving the guidance in the darkness entirely to him. As for rat, he was walking a little way ahead, as was his habit. He walked steadily with his shoulders humped, his eyes fixed on the straight gray road in front of him. This is why he did not notice poor Mole when suddenly something soft and subtle carried gently upon the cool night air, caused Mole to stop dead in his tracks. It was one of those mysterious sensory moments that suddenly reached Mole in the darkness. It made him tingle through and through with its familiar appeal. Even though he could not clearly remember what it was, what do you think a sensory moment is? As you heard earlier, you use your senses to perceive things. Mole is using his senses in this moment to perceive something in the darkness. Having stopped suddenly in the pitch black of the night, his nose searched hither and thither in an effort to recapture the vague scent that had so strongly moved him. A moment, and he had caught it again, and with it this time came recollection of fullest flood. Home! The essence in which had wafted through the air. Why, it must be quite close by him at that moment, his old home. The one he had forsaken and never sought again that day when he first found the river. And now, excuse me, it was sending out its scouts and its messengers by, to capture him and bring him in. The phrase, its scouts and its messengers, is the author's way of saying that the scent of Mole's home is acting like scouts looking for Mole and like messengers bringing him a message. Come home. Since his escape on that bright morning, Mole had hardly given it a thought. So absorbed was he in his new life, with all its pleasures, surprises, and captivating experiences. Now, with a rush of old memories, how clearly it stood up before him, in the darkness. Shabby indeed, and small and poorly furnished, and yet it was his. It was the home he had made for himself, the home he had been so happy to get back to after his day's work. And the home had been happy with him too. Evidently, it was missing him and wanted him back. Mole implores Rat to go with him to his long abandoned home. The call was clear. The summons was plain. He must obey it instantly and go. Ratty, he called, full of joyful excitement, Hold on, come back. Oh, come along, Mole, do, replied the rat cheerfully, still plodding along. Please stop, Ratty, pleaded the poor Mole in anguish of heart. 
You don't understand. It's my home, my old home. I've just come across the smell of it, and it's close by. I must go to it. I must. Oh, come back, Ratty. Please, please come back. The rat was by this time very far ahead, too far to hear clearly what the mole was calling. He was also too far away to catch the sharp note of painful appeal in his voice. And it was much taken up with the weathering, for he was too sm- he too could smell something, something suspiciously like approaching snow. Mole, we mustn't stop. Now, really, he called back. We'll come for it tomorrow, whatever it is you found. But I daren't stop now. It's late, and the snow's coming on again, and I'm not sure of the way. So come on quick. There's a good fellow. And the rat pressed forward on his way without waiting for an answer. Poor Mole stood alone in the road, his heart torn asunder and a big sob gathering somewhere low down inside him. But even under such a test as this, his loyalty to his friend stood firm. Never for a moment did Mole dream of abandoning Rat. Meanwhile, the wafts waves from his old home pleaded and whispered to him. He dared not tarry longer within their magic circle. With a wrench that tore his very heartstrings, he set his face down the road and followed submissively in the track of the rat, while faint little smells reproached him for his new friendship and his forgetfulness. With an effort, he caught up to the unsuspecting rat, who began chattering cheerfully about what they would do when they got back. In the midst of his deceptive fervor, the rat failed to notice his companion's silence and despair. At last, however, when they had gone some considerable way further, he stopped and said kindly, Look here, mole old chap, you've seemed dead tired. No talk left in you, and your feet dragging like lead? We'll sit down for a minute and rest. The snow has held off so far, and the best part of their journey is over. The rat comforts a despondent mole. The mole rested forlornly on a tree stump and tried to control himself, for he felt it surely coming. The sob he had fought with so long refused to be beaten. Up and up, it forced its way to the air, and then another, till poor mole at last gave up the struggle and cried freely and helplessly. The rat, astonished and dismayed at the violence of Mole's grief, did not dare to speak for a while. At last he said, very quietly and sympathetically, What is it, old fellow? Whatever can be the matter? Tell us your trouble, and let me see what I can do. Poor Mole found it difficult to get any words out between such heavy sobs. I know it's a shabby, dingy little place, he sobbed forth at last brokenly. Not like your cozy quarters, or Toad's beautiful hall, or Badger's great house. But it was my own little home, and I was fond of it, and I went away and forgot all about it. And then I smelt it suddenly on the road. When I called, and you wouldn't listen, rat, and everything came back to me with a rush, and I wanted it. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And when you wouldn't turn back, Ratty, I had to leave it, though I was smelling it all the time. I thought my heart would break. We might have just gone and had one look at it. Ratty, only one look. It was close by but you wouldn't turn back. Ratty, you wouldn't turn back. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Recollection brought fresh waves of sorrow and sobs again took full charge of him, preventing further speech. The rat stared straight in front of him, saying nothing, only patting Mole gently on the shoulder. After a time, he muttered gloomily, I see it all now. What a pig I have been! Just a pig! A plain pig! He waited till Mole's sobs became gradually less stormy and more rhythmical. He waited till at last sniffs were frequent and sobs only intermittent. 
Then he rose from his seat and remarking carelessly, Well, now we'd really better be getting on, old chap. And with that, Rhett's rat set off up the road that they had just traveled upon. Wherever are you going to, Ratty, cried the tearful mole, looking up in alarm. We're going to find that home of yours, old fellow, replied the rat pleasantly. So you had better come along, for it will take some finding, and which you shall want your nose. Or in other words, rat needs mole's strong sense of smell to find the quarters. Oh, come back, Ratty, do, cried the mole, getting up and hurrying after him. It's no good, I tell you. It's too late and too dark, and the place is too far off, and the snow's coming. And, and I never meant to let you know I was feeling that way about it. It was all an accident and a mistake. And think of Riverbank and your supper. Hang, Riverbank, and supper too, said the rat heartily. I tell you, I'm going to find this place now if I stay out all night. So cheer up, old chap, and take my arm. We'll, be, we'll very soon be back there. Still snuffling, pleading, and reluctant, Mole suffered himself to be dragged back along the road by his companion. The phrase hang riverbank and supper too means forget about the riverbank and supper. Mole searches for his old home. When at last it seemed to the rat they must be nearing that part of the road where the mole had been held up, he said. Now, no more talking. Business. Use your nose and give your mind to it. They moved on in silence for some little way when suddenly the rat was conscious. Through his arm that was linked in moles out of a faint sort of electric thrill that was passing down that animal's body. Instantly, he disengaged himself, fell back a pace, and waited. The signals were coming through. Mole stood a moment rigid when his uplifted nose quivering slightly felt the air. What do you look like if you stand in a rigid way? Then a quick, sh a short run forward, a fault, a check, a try back, and then a slow, steady, confident advance. The rat, much excited, kept close to his heel as the mole, with something of the air of a sleepwalker, crossed a dry ditch, scrambled through a hedge, and nosed his way over a field. Suddenly, without giving warning, Mole dived. But the rat was on the alert and promptly followed him down the tunnel to which his unerring nose had faithfully led them. So we have some questions to reflect on today. What I would like you to do is to pick one of these questions and write it down and your answer on a piece of paper for me. Go ahead and date it for today. So a question one. In the read aloud today, you heard that Mole and Rat were returning home after being out all day. On their way back home with Rat leading the way and Mole following obediently behind Mole comes across something soft and subtle. Describe what Mole notices. Your second option is Rat initially continues his advance toward his own home instead of stopping with Mole. Why? The third option, when Mole catches up with Rat, Mole breaks down into tears. Why? Number four, how does Mole find his home in all the snow? Do you think Mole's excellent sense of smell is an example of personification? Why or why not? And number five, whose perspective is this read aloud told from? And how do you know? <coughs> Excuse me. Your teacher may ask you to do this, but for my group today, no, nope, do not worry about this. So you can get out your ELA journals and let's write. Choose one of the following questions and write your answer in your journals. Be sure to use the conventions of standard written English. So you're going to pick one of the one or the other. Number one, Rat decides to go back and find Mole's old home, even though Rat is hungry and cold. Which theme do you think fits in this part of the story? 
And number two, how would you feel if you were Mole in this part of the story? This is a think pair share. So you're gonna turn and talk with someone that you are listening to with the story. Maybe somebody at home. I'm going to ask you a question. I'll give you a minute to think about the question. And then I'll ask you to get with your group and discuss. Each group will be asked to give their answers. Hmm. We'll figure out how to do that remotely. How would you feel if you were mole in this part of the story? So turn at home and talk with somebody about how you would feel if you were mole, and then come back. So let's look at our word for today. It is reproached. Everyone say the word with me. Reproached. Reproached means you're scolded, corrected, express disappointment in someone for a certain behavior. As a baby, James was never reproached for making a mess while eating, but as he grew older, he learned there were certain rules to follow at the dinner table. Have you ever reproached someone for behavior that disappointed you? Have you ever been reproached by someone? Use reproached in your definite your sentence here to kind of explain when you were reproached and for what. So what's the word we've been talking about? Reproached. So what part of speech is the word reproached? If you said a verb, you would be correct. Reproach is an action, something that happens. Good deal. We'll stop there for today. Thank you for listening. Come back for the next part of the story.